Hi all, my name is Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today I am here with a special video episode of the Nokia Siemens Network's Flexi Multiradio BTS system. And it is a reverse engineering of the power amplifier board. Now this is uh, some work that I cannot do myself, mostly because I do not have the required uh, measurement equipment and I do not have all the knowledge to actually do this. So this has been done by a user on highvoltageforum.net called Dastier. His name is really Michael. He comes from Germany and he has done a lot of reverse engineering on these yeah, power amplifier circuits in order to use them again for amateur radio use. So this work is really superb and really worth sharing. So for this amplifier, I am doing a video about his work to show it and also give you some links to all the other power amplifier parts that he has reverse engineered and done some measurements on. So if you are interested in the performance of these circuits, this video is definitely worth it for you. I would also like to send a thank you out to my two current channel members that pay me a minimum fee each month to support my channel works here. Thank you for that. And also please check out my merchandise. I have some really awesome stuff like this push button, receive lightning cap. So coffee is important for making electronics. So cheers. So what quickly became known as the wet amplifier due to the water damage of these circuits. Michael Steer prepared this content list that first we have an overview, then we go through the architecture. We look at the LDMOS biasing and then some output coupler measurements. The S21 measurements, which is the forward gain of the amplifier. And then we have a overview of the power and efficiency of the amplifier. And then he compares it to what is called a dirty amplifier that he got two of these modules from me. One was cleaned up and the other one was still um, infected with a lot of corrosion and dirt. And then at last, a simulation of how the circulator on the output works. On this overview, we can see that he uh, put in some new input and output connectors. The output connector would have a circulator connected, but that was not an integrated part of the power amplifier board in this type. Now he also identified the coupled output where you can measure the output power of the circuit. And we have the two connectors that says VDD and yeah, both says VDD, which connects the input power. And this particular power amplifier did actually not have a enable signal that once it had power connected to the two connectors, it would simply turn on and start amplifying. On this principal diagram, Michael shows how the buildup of the power amplifier is. And you can also see my walkthrough of this on the PCB itself in the part two video of the circuit analysis. But it is a pre-amplifier. We have some splitters that split out in 90 degrees phase shift. We have the power amplifier LD mass. And then on the other side, we have again, 90 de degree combiners. And it all goes up to the microstrip coupler before the output circulator. It is a balanced amplifier architecture. And on the next slide, we will see what kind of topology it uses. As Michael mentions here, it is normal that you in LTE and VCDMA applications see Dorothy amplifiers. These you can normally identify by the different length of output PCB tracks between the two MOSFETs that make up the Dorothy amplifier pair. Now the whole idea about a Dorothy amplifier is that you have a very high efficiency from very low output power to the maximum simply by using a one LD mass to drive that maybe halfway up to, through the spectrum. And once you get to there, you start using the second along with the first. And by that you minimize your losses on the lower power levels. I made a separate video on Dorothy amplifiers. You should really check that out. As I mentioned earlier, the LD mass needs gate biasing in order to temperature compensate. And here, Michael measured this with his Philips PM2525 multimeter to measure the input current to the left and right final states where we have the large 250 watt LD mass output transistors and also the preamp amplifier. 
Now he discovered that it has symmetrical biasing on both of the LDMOS output transistors, and it is way below the maximum specified bias current in the datasheet. For the next step here where Michael reverse engineered the whole bias circuit, I really do respect him for that job. Uh, this was posted on High Voltage Forum uh, for another power amplifier, but he simply had to desolder every single small surface mount transistor or diode in order to measure it and find out what it was. That was a huge work. And what he found out was that this bias was controlled by a non-volatile digital to analog converter controlled over an I2C interface. The settings on the BIOS was fixed from the factory and it is temperature compensated through a NPN transistor mounted along with the output transistors. So before continuing, let's not forget the coffee. Mm, good strong coffee. Now, what Michael did for the biasing circuit, that along as he did reverse engineer the different components, he could also see a pattern when comparing this to the application notes from the yeah, RF LD MOS manufacturers. And this example circuit diagram from Amplion, that was basically the same circuit that was implemented in the power amplifiers. This quickly made it possible to gain control over the bias and actually run the power amplifier under control without damaging the output stage. To measure the uh, power gain of the amplifier, Michael used the coupler strip that sits just near the output connector to the circulator on the power amplifier. It has a minus 40 dB coupling factor and he used his HB power meter with power sensor and a signal generator in order to measure the power gain of the amplifier. He also has his VNA, which is a advanced R3565 spectrum analyzer used for the following measurements. From the S21 power gain measurements on the amplifier, it has roughly a 38 dB gain overall. As we can see on the markers here, we at marker 1 has 38 dB at 1.7 GHz and going up to 0.4 we have 30, uh, 28 dB amplification at 2.2 GHz. So this is the bandwidth of 500 MHz of the amplifier, where it has a average amplification of 30 to 35 dB. Now I did mention that the Dorothy amplifier has an inherent high efficiency. And as we can see from his measurements here, that is not reflected when trying to bench test this power amplifier on its own outside of its native environment. That on the input from minus 30 to 13 dB, we can see that the output power also goes from zero up to 112 watt, and the efficiency only goes up to 40%. So that is of course much lower than expected. The comparison with the dirty amplifier, where you can see the picture of it here, that it has a lot of corrosion and also a lot of dirt on the tracks. So let's see how that performs compared to the cleaned up version. The S21 measurements of the power gain of the amplifier is near identical with only a 1.5 dB loss, but it takes up to 16% more power and Michael thinks that is probably due to the mismatch or the capacitive coupling between tracks because of the dirt. And as the S21 plot shows here, we can see that the bandwidth is still between 1.7 and 2.2 GHz, but the overall gain and average gain is some 1 to 2 dB below the cleaned up amplifier. The output circulator is a magnetic component which uses magnets and ferrite cores along with some copper tracks or brass tracks to protect the amplifier from reflected power from the antenna due to mismatch between the amplifier and the antenna output. Here we can see that he took the circulator apart. It was quite damaged from uh, water and had gained a lot of rust and dirt. As we can see, it consists of some discs that isolate between the different parts. It has two magnets and then it has two ferrite triangles and we have the PCB tracks with the input, the output and the 50 ohm termination. Now the idea with a circulator is that the power can only rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. 
one way around. So once you connect the input, that can only circulate to the output, and the output can only circulate into the termination. And by that, you have protected your amplifier from reflected energy from the antenna. Michael also included a illustration of a FEM analysis of the magnetic properties of a circulating isolator. And we can see here that the magnetic field does propagate the signal from one leg and only out the other. Michael did also try to cut out the pre-amplifier of the dirty board in order to try to reverse engineer that to work in a wider spectrum. So he did remap the output of the transistor and then made some measurements. So in this vector analyzer screenshot or photo of a screen, we can see that he did succeed in widening the bandwidth from the 1700 to 2200 and have the center point moved up to 2 gigahertz instead. So making it almost possible to use it nearer 2.4 gigahertz for amateur radio use. He recorded the same S21 power gain amplifier measurements as he did with the complete power amplifier. And as we can see here, he measured from minus 40 dB to 14. And the efficiency is way lower than the large output transistors can do. But he could push this up to a output power of 5 watt, which is unfortunately not recorded in this table. And putting up all the measurements next to each other, he get these four graphs of the input dB, the input current, the output dB, and also the efficiency shown with the blue line. And as we can see, it does take a bend downwards at the end, but overall the efficiency you would see in a Dorothy amplifier is the quickly rising logarithmic function, as you see on the light blue here. And in the last screenshot from the S21 plot, we can also see the widening of the bandwidth from 1.9 to 2.2 gigahertz, and that the edges of the signal is no longer as sharp due to the high phase noise, as he had no filtering on this small amplifier and it was cut out of the original board. Thank you for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of the reverse engineering of this power amplifier and I really hope it gave you some ideas of what is possible with old discarded equipment, that this was actually repurposed into being used as a 2.4 GHz power amplifier in amateur radio. And I will also show another work he has done on another amplifier in a future video. But that first has all the teardown videos to be done at first. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you will subscribe to the channel. Else check out the channel memberships and help me get much more of this kind of equipment. And until next time, see ya.